So he makes this argument in the text that essentially, and this is similar to the GIC as well, I think, the argument I think is slightly different, but he makes the, 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 the argument that a socialist or communist economy has to be based upon labor, you know, directly social labor, labor time accounting. And he, he, he sets up this kind of three possible types of society. Now, he sets this up assuming, right, that it's, it's commodity production, so private property, okay? And then there are three options. You know, you could have a society where there is literally no link between the amount of work that you do and the amount that you can take from the society, right? So it doesn't matter if you work or not, you can take as much as you want, okay? So that's one one case. So another one then is in individuals who are more productive, they do not get more more social labor in return for their social labor. So in effect, they become, as he puts it here, they become philanthropists, right? So it's an economy based on, you know, philanthropy of the of the more productive to the least productive. And so this is essentially, you know, directly social labor. You're just getting rewarded for your labor time, not your efficiency, your productivity of labor. And third, then, is that there is a link between the efficiency and your return. So that's like capitalism. You're rewarded for your productive efficiency. And he says, like, you know, that the last one is capitalism. The first one where there's no link, though that's just inconceivable that a society can have no link between what you get. And he says that based, because it's based on private property, only the third one is possible, right? Because the second one that is dependent upon private producers being philanthropists, right? And that's, that's not possible, right? Now, some may say that, oh, well, you could have some variation, like a kind of a market socialism where you're rewarded for some of your productivity, but not too much. There's a little bit of inequality. There are some small variations in like, you know, classes. There are not huge differences between the planning class and the, you know, road production class. And so there are in-betweens, right? But if we just have to look to, to history is that once you have rewarding for productivity, you end up with class dynamics coming through and then you end up, it will devolve back to a proper class system. So you might be able to temporarily have a, an option in between, but the, the trajectory, as we can see from, from every single socialist, inverted commas, society that had wage differentials, blah, 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 every single one has reverted, if not strictly to a capitalism. They have gone, say, like China, which is capitalism and with a, with a communist party ruling, explicitly ruling over capitalist relations. Yeah, so you could look at it from a, the point of view of, of control theory for, for many of our, our listeners who might have some familiarity with that, where you have this idea of stable poles of a system. So there'd be certain configurations of a system which are in which there's a kind of stable operation and other configurations where it will spin out of control or where it will gravitate to a stable configuration. And so here, I think, drawn on LMN's paper, what we can see is that the argument he's really making is that there, for a commodity production economy, the stable pole has to be distribution according to value. And the reason he gives is very simple. If it wasn't distribution according to value, it would have to rely on philanthropy. It would have to rely on people who could be getting more in terms of their production of commodities, giving up that possibility in order to donate that back to the society or to the less efficient producers. And I would say, yeah, history has pretty much borne that out, that you can have these kind of configurations but they're not stable over a long period of time. Over a long period of time, they the people who know that they would be getting a lot more if they had a classical capitalist distribution system, they push their class interest, which is exactly to bring that about. And in the end, they succeed because that is the stable configuration for an economy of uh, private production processes. To misquote like Mao, you know, who says like political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. The economic power doesn't grow out of the barrel of the gun. E economic power does not grow out of the political power. Right. Yeah, very much to the contrary. 